What's going on guys? One level to everybody. We got UFC 279 Diaz versus Ferguson. Prediction breakdown here guys. Man, a lot of changes on this card man. And usually when the cards change up like this, card end up to be a disaster. A lot of upsets, right? Um, I finished breaking on this card yesterday, but um, they didn't get to post it until now, you know? Been kind of busy here, guys. Uh, I'm trying to get these cards out to you guys earlier, the best I can. And just have a lot of things I've been working on. Um, 13 fights on this card, like I said, been, been changes, man. It was Nate Diaz versus Kamazat, and Ferguson versus, I believe it was Jingling, and Dano Rodriguez versus Kevin Hollins. It just did a whole switch up here, man. It's, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good card, though. I got a lot of good matchups on here. Um, just break this down, guys, and put this real quick for you guys here and knock this out. Um, first fact, we've got Dar Okay, before I start, my bad, guys. Before I get started, <laughs> hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel. Also, check out my Patreon account for all of my prop plays, my face off predictions. You can also donate to my PayPal account if you guys want to. You know, it helps out the channel a lot. Um, it makes me even can spend more time you know breaking on the fights have a lot more time to break on the fights you know so have more time break it down to get better predictions so yeah so jump into this real quick guys first fight we got Darren Weeks versus Johan um, Lenesis um, Weeks here on uh, forward pressure um, but doesn't do enough you know he, he pressure you but you don't really let the hands go too much I mean when he does let the hands go you can tell that he's pretty powerful guy right um we look to wrestle too like i said he has heavy hands and he will fade as a fight go on but he just doesn't let his hands go enough man and he just he will walk you down and pressure pressure try to cut you off but then nothing happened <laughs> you know what i mean so his opponent here johan johan is gonna have the four inch of reach and three inch of height which is massive here guys um he will look to take you down he look to wrestle you down also have heavy hands man but he's hittable though so sometimes he come in here and just start going wild swinging swinging but his chin is there to get hit to get countered right um you will also break under pressure so you will guess out if he can't get the finish or is hitting you with punches and you see that you're not going out he can't knock you out i think it's confident break and then in the later rounds he just guess out like what you see happen here with um gabe green right um <sighs> This is a tough card, guys, to be honest with you, man, because, like I said, when you see cards like this with guys switch up all the time and a big switch up at the last minute, man, you know, I mean, just expect something, man, like big upsets to happen here, man. I mean, I could be wrong, but it's, it's a tough card, guys. I'm going I'm to go with Johan here, guys. I'm going to say Johan by decision, but I'm not confident, though, all right? Next fact, we got Elise Reed versus Melissa Martinez. Uh, I believe Reed is a short notice here, it's supposed to be Hannon Cypher. Um, at least Reed here, karate base. I feel she's a more experienced fighter here. Um, but she's she can be hittable. She has, like I said, she's a karate base though, but she was still moving on out and learn, and learn her techniques. Her techniques are not bad, her punch in her box is not bad either. Um, I feel this fight here is going to be more of a stand-up fight, though, because Elise Reed doesn't really go for takedowns as much. And her opponent here, Melissa Martinez, who's coming over from um, Combati here, which uh, nearly all her fights are in Combati. You know, Combati champion here, um, boxes, you know, and, and her hands are not bad either. But she don't really like the ground game as much either, so she likes to stand up. So this fight could be a stand-up match here, guys, uh, with Martinez here, super melee. Um hasn't fought since 2019 that's the last time she fought against dirty des desiree yanis right um martinez will let her hands go though but like i said she don't really have that experience though the kind of fights that she's had three and two three and two zero one three two three two five and one against dirty des who almost beat her which some people say dirty des won that fight and that was 2019 you know at least reed is just more active and it's going to be a striking match. And Elise is known for striking. Anytime you take her to the ground, that's when she has a problem. Majority of her losses is because she ended up on the ground. And she's just more of a stand-up fighter. And her stand-up is not bad, man. But Martinez ain't bad either. 
Um, it's a tough one here, guys. Um, short notice for Reed. Martinez making a debut. Hasn't fought since 2019. I'm going to go with Elise Reed here, guy. I'm going to say Elise Reed by uh, by decision, but I'm not confident here. All right? Tough matchups. These two matchups here, guys, the early matchups here are tough. So be very careful with it, man. I'm just trying to do the best I can. I spend time on this card, though. So I really spend a lot of time on it, watching every single fight, even watching some um, um, interviews, you know, so... Hopefully, let's see what happens, man. A anything is possible, though. Nothing guaranteed. Next fight here, guys. We got Chad Anglegler oh, versus Heli Antegler. <laughs> this one was that bad, man. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Chad here um, um, can get taken down and can get scrambled on. But his main thing is his striking, though. He can also submit you as a guillotine choke on him, though. So if you take him down, he will, he will, he will guillotine you. Um... Came off the contender series here, of a split decision here against Garoff, which was, that fight was kind of a controversial kind of fight, because people would say that Munin, you know, won that fight. But, uh, yeah, he can get taken down, man, and um, he can get scrambled on, and he would look for guillotines. The striking is not bad, more counter strike, you have a counter hook on him there. Um... <sighs> His opponent here, Heli Antegel. Um, Heli here is, has a good wrestling base, strong wrestling base here, man. And has heavy hands and is durable. Also, have a little more experience, a lot more experience um, than Chad here, right? Um, Casey Kenny, uh, Gustavo Lopez, Ryan Bonnet, you know what I mean? Um, Batagirl Dano, you know? So he has a little more experience than Kaya Ascaro, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, this fight here with the wrestling of 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 heli if he really wants to he can just wrestle 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 and pull off a victory man but again chad is kind of like i said he he's, his hands are not bad and he's kind of sneaky he, he he will look to pull he will look for a way to win the fight but like i said he can get taken down and against heli i feel heli just heli's a little i feel he's more well-rounded here and a little more experience in my opinion so i'm gonna go with heli here and i'm gonna say heli by decision guys Slightly confident in this one, but I'll let you know. I'll leave it down below. All right. So heli by decision, guys. Next fight here we have uh, Norma Dumont versus Daniel Wolf. Um, tough matchups, guys. Man, nearly all these four fights are tough. Um, Dumont here um, has more of a Sancho um, Sando base kung fu kind of vibe. Um, uh, I feel she, I mean she is more experienced than than Wolf, right? Um, this fight gonna be a stand up fight though, because both women don't really like the ground as much. Um, uh, both women just favor striking. Um, um, Dorman here though, or Norma Dorman, she she struggles with women with with tall, long women with tall and long reach, man, height and reach. You know, against Macy Chasen, she kind of struggles slightly. Um, Megan Anderson struggles slightly, could hide and reach. Um, it's in about Wolf, though, man. Wolf coming from boxing, you know, 27 and 14. Um, I, I have here 30 and 14, but, I mean, she's going to have a 3-inch of reach, man, a 4-inch of height, which is freaking massive. She, but she don't have much MMA, though, man, at all, man. She only have one MMA fight here, which, again, is Tanisha Tennant, which is on the Contender Series, which... You know, Tanisha was kind of taking over that fight in the end of it. I think the third or third round. You know, uh, Wolf got taken down, side mount, ground and pounded. You know what I mean? Mm, like I said, Wolf coming from amateur background, but again, with Domant, Domant know how to strike. You know, she has the striking ability. So she don't have to worry too much about getting taken down. In the fight against all, like Mesa Chasen, you know, she's going for takedowns and she's struggling. And time you go and pressure, pressure and take her down, take her down, she doesn't do as well. So this is a fight that's going to be more stand-up. But, you know, Wolf boxes and everything like that. So Wolf does have a technique and the footwork don't look bad. But it's an MMA fight though, man. And again, age and number, which is 39. But like I said, age and number all depends on how you take care of yourself. You know what I mean? She takes care of herself pretty well. Um, like I said, she's got to hide and reach. Not much MMA experience. If Dormant want to, if Norma Dormant want to, she can even push for takedowns if, if she really want to. If she really want to. I feel she's the more experienced MMA fighter, man. 
I mean, she's the more experienced MMA fighter. I mean, she has more fights overall. And she fought even some top women and beat them. So, um, she even has some submission under her belt, too. Yeah, she got a couple, couple submissions here. So, I feel the more well-rounded person here is dormant. So, I mean, just MMA-wise. And it's, it's a cage fight. You're in a cage and you can wrestle Tate down. And if she wants to, she can go for Tate down. If she wants to. She can mix it up. I'm not going to go with normal dormant here. I'm going to say normal dormant by decision. But I'm not confident because Wolf had just had the boxing. Even though, you know, she's not as well-rounded. But then she has good boxing. And the height and reach. So, but I'm going to go with normal. Normal by decision, guys. Next fight here, we have uh, uh, we have Jay Collar versus Chris Burnett. Um, uh, Collar here is going to have a five inch of height and three inch of reach, which is massive. And Jake here is also is, um, a veteran here, been in the UFC for a while. He was like maybe I think it was like one seventy at one time, I believe, two or five. Or something like that. He's at 185. So this is a guy that, that fought at 185. I think he fought at 172. And he's all the way up to heavyweight. 265, man. Um, this fight here, man. Uh, with Chris Barnett, man. Chris Barnett is a pretty athletic dude. Even though, you know, you can look at his weight. It's kind of a big belly. But see, he has a Taekwondo base there. And his kicking is not bad. His hands, though... He, I mean, he has some knuckle power there, but he, he hasn't really fought nobody. If you look on his record, he ain't really fought nobody. And he, he does have unorthodox techniques. And you know what I'm saying? He will land that spinning back kick, even spinning heels. But, man, I just feel like with Color, Color is a more experienced guy with a length, a reach advantage. You know what I mean? Color can take him down if he wants to. And Chris don't do good on the ground. Chris... I mean, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from him, but I feel that Jake is a better fighter here. He's a more well-rounded guy, man, and a veteran guy, and he shows it. I'm liking Color here, Jake Color. I'm going to say Jake Color by submission first round, and I'm confident in this play, guys. All right. Next fight here, we have uh, Jimmy Pickett versus Dennis Tulling. Mispronounced that. This is a tough one here, man. Uh, it's a tough one. Um, pick it here, man. Um, three inch of reach. You know what I'm saying? He's got a reach advantage. He's a skilled guy, though, man. Pick is a skilled guy. He's athletic, he's a skilled guy, but his mental is just not there. You know what I mean? So it really depends on what Pickett comes out to fight. He has all the tools to win. You know, he has all the tools physically, but just yeah, I know he just doesn't let it go. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't set up from the outside properly. He doesn't let the hands go enough. So, and he, and he tends to guess out, you know, as the fight goes on, if he's not playing out in his, you know, if he's not playing, the fight not playing out in the, in the way or he wants to play out, you know, he will, he, he will start to guess out and just we drop the ball. So, I mean, <laughs> this fight here, man, is, is, is a tough one to pick, man, because you're dealing with a mentor here. I mean, he, he's a opponent here, um, Dennis, you know, Dennis is, is going to be the slower fighter here. I think Pick is a quicker guy. Um, Dennis can get counter too. Kind of leaves a strike out there. Um, kind of slow at the retraction, you know. Doesn't pull the technique back fast enough. Um, can get taken down. Um, but he will get into firefights though, man. And he will he will let his hands go. And um, he will keep the pressure on you. He keep coming forward, forward, and just let the hands go. And that's the thing. And he has more volume. This is the thing about this fight here. Pickett, you know, he doesn't fight too good. He doesn't fight too good on the inside. He fights a long range. So this guy going to walk him down. Once he can get past the reach and just keep letting his hands go, that's all he, That's all Dennis needs, needs to really do. And Pickett is not really a wrestler. He's not really a chain wrestler. He's going to wrestle, wrestle, wrestle consistently because he will gas himself out. He will take you down maybe one or twice, but he's not going to consistently take you down. Dennis is going to keep throwing that's what you really need to do, man. Once you keep pressure and pick it and let your hands go, he will break on the pressure, man. It's a mental thing. Dennis is a dog here, man. Um, I was going for pick it because I would say, oh, you could corner him. But, man, when is the last time pick it has a finish? Against, uh, 
contender series against Jovan Patti back in 2020. Ah oh, man, I'm, I'm gonna go with Dennis here, guys. This is more volume. Dennis looked like he's more mentally dear. You know, I mean, he's gonna keep coming forward. I mean, Pickett gonna need gonna need the reach, which he does have the reach, but he doesn't. But he doesn't let his hands go. So I like. I must say, Dennis. I must say, Dennis by KOTQ in the first round. But if Pickett can stay on the outside and use his jab and then keep him on distance, keep him keep him the end of the punches, then then Pickett could could win. Keep him the end of the jab. Pick could pull the fight off if he can do that, you know, which he can, but this just depends, man. It's hard to tell. So Dennis by KOTQ first round. I'm not confident, guys. Next fighter, we got Jonathan Almeida versus Anton Torkaji. Man, these are some tough names. Um, Almeida here, man, is a, is a guy is a, is a fiend on BJJ black belts. Pretty well-rounded guy. Very athletic. Strong double legs. It kind of reminds me of a prime... Um, Oh, what's his name again? A prime alligator. What's his name? Ah, uh, I, I, I forgot his name. Jacare Shoujo. You remember Jacare Shoujo? Like a prime Jacare Shoujo, though. That 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 fast double leg, heavy grounding pounds. His opponent here, um, Anton. Anton is not bad, you know. Um, striking needs work though. His wrestling, I would say, is pretty good. Um, sticks on you like a wet blanket. Striking needs a word, though, man. I mean, he would throw all kind of crazy techniques, but his face doesn't move. His head don't move up center line. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how the ground going to go. Because, I mean, Almeida is a pretty well-rounded guy here, man. He can take this fight anywhere he wants. But I think Almeida, man, his submission games is, 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 is on point. Even his takedowns. But like I said, but Anton, Anton will go for takedowns, too. But I must say Almeida here. I must say Almeida by submission in the first round, guys. Next fight here we have Hakeem Daudu versus Julian Erosa. Man, these fights are tough, guys. Oh man. Uh, Daudu here, striking base more of a Thai style. Um heavy striking. Um take down defense has been getting better, but he can still get taken down. Um can get flat footed. Uh, will slow down as the fight goes on. Um, will tie up and start to clinch, you know, one, as the fight goes on because he gets tired. Um, let me see. And his power kind of fade as the fight goes on. Um, his opponent here, though, Julian Arosa. Julian Arosa here is going to have a five inch height and two inch reach. Julian Arosa is a, is a freaking veteran, man. This guy is a very, very, very freaking experienced. Been an ultimate fighter show. He's a very experienced guy, man. Been a contender series, I believe. Um, he can take this fight anywhere and win it, man. He can win it standing up or submission, takedowns. But he's hateable and can get knocked out. He'll be knocked out, I believe, like five times, I believe. So he, he can get knocked out. And usually when the guy is a quicker fighter, usually he can get caught. You know what I mean? So I was kind of back and forth in this fight here. If if Rosa can get out the first, he has a chance of winning this fight. So Dadu gonna need a knockout in the first round. So I would say Dadu win the fight in the first round. And if he doesn't, then Rosa have a chance of beating Dadu. Believe me. Uh, and Rosa's a veteran man, and he will go into veteran mode and. and find a way to pull it off by submission or just pressure 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 and beat you up on the foot and even possibly even knock you out too you really can take this fight anywhere man that do just more stand up punch punch leg kick punch punch leg kick and he sometimes head hunts um i'm gonna go with a rosa here guys i must say a rosa by submission in the third round and i'm not confident because like i said if dadu catches him flush first round that's it so but again look at dadu that would do when was his last time he had a knockout 2019 against Yoshinori Hori. Mm, not in the US season, reason. Uh, this is the last time he got a knockout there. So it's not like a guy that's just consistent knocking out people. I'm going to Rosa. I'm going to say Rosa submission third round. Not confident, guys. Uh, next fight here we have Johnny Walker versus Ian Kutelabo. Damn, man. Walker gonna have a five inch of height and a seven to eight inch of reach. That's freaking humongous, dude. Heavy strikes, heavy leg kicks, punches, right? But with Johnny Walker, man, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, this guy's a technician. He looks for the openings on the outside. So one hit a quitter. But throwing the hands and volume, it just doesn't do well. And when you start to pressure him, it doesn't do well either. Um, Ian here, heavy-handed, man. Um, we look for Tate, don't look to rest you. Um, can get knocked out too. Um, and he's kind of wild at times, but if, if, if Ian just like close a distance and get in, just get into wrestling, uses Greco Roman wrestling or Sambo, go for takedowns, that's all he needs, man. And he can pull off a win here, in my opinion. He doesn't need, even need to strike a Walker. Walker doesn't really let his hands go, Walker doesn't really let his hands go like that because he's more of a technician guy. He waits for you to, he waits for you on the outside, may fly him with a knee or hit you with a straight punch or hit you with an elbow. When he's in close, you go for short techniques like elbows, but he's like a one hitter quitter. If he can't find that one hit, then that's it. It's not like a guy that's going to jab, jab, bam, 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 jab, bam, you know, like a volume of punches. So Ian just need to close the distance in him. I'm going to go with Ian here, guy. I'm going to say Ian by KO TQ in the first round, possibly ground and pound, but I'm not confident. Because, like I said, Jenna Walker is going to have the 78, 78 inch of reach, man. That's humongous. But I'm going to go with Ian, KO TQ first round, not confident. Next fight, we've got Arena Aldana versus Macy Chasen. Um, Aldana here, man, sharp boxing, movement is pretty nice, um, nasty ground and pound. She's a pretty technical fighter here, man. Her ground game has gotten better too. Take on defense doesn't look bad. Um, her opponent here, Macy Chiasen, um, going to have the four inch of reach and two inch of height. A lot of these fighters are going to have a lot of reach over these other fighters, man. Nearly the entire card is like that. Um, she will look to grapple, but she will fade as the fight goes on. And her striking is... It all depends on the matchup, man. Her striking against Aldana. Aldana has better striking by, by far, man. It's just more technical, you know, head movement, um, the jab, the setup from the other side, just com combinations, just the boxing, the hands, and the footwork. I don't feel Macy Chasing footwork is still, he's still in the works, man. He kind of start to step in, you just, just you see all the holes in it. With Aldana, you know, he's ripped to the body, you know what I'm saying, set up the jab, follow up straight, uppercut, body shot. Um... I'm liking Aldana here, guys. I must say Aldana by KOTQ in the first round. I'm not confident, though. All right. Next fight, we got Jingling Lee versus Daniel Rodriguez, D-Rod. Jingling Lee here, heavy, heavy striker here. Um, pretty well-rounded guy. Walks it down, hits you with an overhand right. Got power in the right hand. Not a bad fighter. You know, he's a punches chancer. Very experienced guy. You can see a veteran. D-Rod... D Rod is a heavy hand striker too. His boxing is pretty nice. He got hands, like I said, he's well rounded, he's durable, got ground game, his ground defense, take on defense is not bad. Last winner was over Kevin Lee. He's a pretty good fighter, man. D Rod's a pretty good fighter, man. He's very smart of fight IQ too. Um it's an interesting fight. I believe Lee does have a um knockout chance or it's a possibility. Catches D Rod, he could knock him out, man. And we saw D Rod got hurt against uh, Dwight Grant and then Dwight, I don't know what happened in that fight, he heard him and then Dwight Grant heard him and knocked him down and then I don't know what happened, something happened where like D-Rod recovered and then just knocked him out and, and, and just knocked out Grant so yeah, uh, I'm liking D-Rod here but, but be careful because like I said, Jingling has a power in his hand man so it just takes one shot guys, doesn't matter how good you are, you know, you just face not meant to get hit, right? So D-Rod by decision, all right? I'm not confident. Um, next fight here, guys. We have Kamazan Chimazivas. <laughs> oh, man. Kamazan Chimaziv versus Kevin Holland. This is interesting, man, because the reason why everything happened here at all, the mix-up, mix-up fight, because Kamazan missed weight. And he missed weight by a lot, man. I believe he missed weight by eight pounds or something like that. <laughs> That's a lot, man. How you miss weight by that much? That means he was planning to miss weight. He was planning to miss weight then. I don't know, guys. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to say it though, but, you know, sometimes these cards, you know, uh, could be kind of fishy, kind of suspect, you know? Uh, you know, you just, you just don't know what happens behind the curtain. You know, they said that fight broke out and all these things, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened, man. You just gotta be careful, especially when you're placing. If you're placing bets, you gotta be careful. So, 
sometimes these fights are the fight itself and octagon when the guys are fighting you know yeah, I don't believe that I don't believe that set up but you know yeah. I mean we know it go already but judging system everything like that uh, um Kamazad here I say miss weight by I think like eight pounds um strong wrestling base here striking is not bad but yeah, I see holes in him <laughs> I, see, I see holes in him man when he when he fought um um Tinder when he fought um what's his name Friggin' um, Gilbert Burns, man. I see some holes in his striking, man. He, he's, he, he can get counter strike. Chin is kind of high up. He will gas out. He, if he can't submit you in the first round or do what he wants to do, then he start to fade. But then he, but then he will hang in there, though, and he will box it out with you. But he's he's open, man. And this is a five-round fight because Kevin Holland said he won a five-round. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know, guys. I th I, there's a reason why he missed weight. So if you miss that much weight, there's a reason why for that. Like I said, you know, you just never know what kind of suspect. Um, Kevin Holland, though, is going to have the six-inch reach, which is it's freaking massive. And this fight is going to be a 180 catch because then, like I said, Camazon missed weight. So Kevin Holland is not really going to be at a 185. And Kevin, Kevin Holland fought at 185 already. Uh, Kevin Holland here, he's known to, be, known to can get taken down. But it's a five-round fight. If Kamazan take him down first, second, Kamazan's gonna gas out, man. It's a five-round fight. That's that, that, that's the reason why he made it five rounds because he knows he sees in that that he can gas out and he miss weight too. Um Holland man, he's pinpoint accurate, man. He strikes, he will catch you, man. Coming in, counter you, he will hit you from the outside, mix up the punches with the kicks, elbows, his, his um BJJ and Black Belt is not bad either. He's grown, he's grown game. He will look for submissions too. I feel like the more experienced guy here, obviously, is Kevin Holland, man. And like I said, Kamazan on miss weight and all these things. And uh, you just you just don't know. You know, you don't you don't know what the reason why he miss miss weight. And it's a five round fight. And Kamazan was gassed out in the second round. Kamazan was gassed out against Gilbert Burns, and it was on a three a three round fight. And in the third round, he was getting caught. In the second round, he got knocked down. I'm liking Kevin Holland here, guys. If Kevin Holland, if Kevin Holland, you know, he may get takedown, which he may get a takedown. I mean, Kam Kamazan may take him down. Sure, take him down first, second, but how long can you keep taking him down for? Until Kevin Holland land that shot on him. Like, like I said, Gilbert Burns and Kevin Holland is two different kind of hit, man. It's two different kind of striking. Kevin Holland got the reach too. Gilbert Burns is a shorter guy, man. So Kamazan fighting a guy that's on his height and longer reach and and hit harder. Kevin Holland hits harder than uh, Gilbert Burns does. And he strikes better. He's more accurate and he's more technical. Gilbert Burns more BJJ, but like I said, Kamazan will have to go get the submission in the first round if he can. It's possible he could. Man. I'm going to go with Kevin Holland here, guys. I'm going to say Kevin Holland by third round KOTQ, man. I'm not confident, though, because of, you know, Kevin Holland can get taken down. But those was against, you know, one of the five guys. You know, when you, if you're even one of the fives, you're really coming up from like 190. Some of the guys are 200 dropping on the one of the five. Uh, and Kamazan possibly could pull up a submission and Holland, because Holland been submitted before, I think, twice. I'm liking Kevin Holland though. I'm gonna say Kevin Holland by KOTQ in the third round, guys. Not confident. Main fight in the card here is Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson. Which is, this, this entire card is, is bananas, man. As far as like, it's a tough card to predict. It's a tough one to predict, guys. Nate Diaz, BJJ, black belt, boxing. Um, not, boxing is pretty decent. He got, he got. Um, Nate got good hands, man. Um, he can be heavy on the front foot though, and he easily can get caught. But but he's game though, and he will keep landing that punches and bunches on you. Just keep letting the hands go, man. Um, I actually hung out with Nate one time, I believe. Um, I hung out with him. Hung out with Nate back in two thousand, I believe two thousand nine. After I think the Ultimate Fighter show, I think it was over in Fort 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 Lauderdale, man. Like it was me and a couple of the guys were all hanging out in some club. I mean, it's a pretty cool dude, man. 
Yeah, it was a pretty cool dude, man. I mean, it was just chilling, you know. It wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really like, you know, it was, just, it was basically hanging out. You know, it wasn't anything like, you know, you know, just whatever. I was, you know, I was like, yo, what's up, dude? He's like, yeah, man, just hang out for a little bit. And that's it. Yeah, so, yeah, man, it's a pretty cool cat. Um, Ferguson here. Um, Tony Ferguson. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. It's a tough one, guys. Man. He got knocked out bad against uh, Michael Chandler, man. And that wasn't me. Oh, man. Uh, Ferguson is well rounded guy. But, man, Ferguson just hasn't been looking the same, man. I mean, you see guys losing back to back. Even though these are tough guys he's losing to. Just, just man, it's kind of hard, man, to, like, predict these guys. I mean, Nate Diaz did look good against, um, uh, against, um, Leon Edwards, though. He, he, and he did hurt him. He, he almost finished him in the fifth round, so... I mean, and this is a five-round fight. So, I mean, if anything, man, I mean, man, man, Ferguson just, uh, Ferguson just don't look good, man. Like, even though against, against, against Chan Chandler here, you know, he was landing some, you know, he hit him some shots there, here and there. But I think his reaction time is just not there anymore. He doesn't react too well. Um, he still throw punches and kicks. The only thing about his fight, he could cut up Nate with elbows. That's the thing, Nate can get cut easily, man. So you can cut him up with elbows, man. And then the fight could stop because of Dr. Stoppage. So that's the only thing that I see Tony Ferguson can go. But the longer the fight goes, man, they don't favor Nate, man. You know what I mean? And, and Nate's going to keep pushing that pace and pushing that pace, push that pace, push that pace. But again, Ferguson going to be hitting him with elbows. And it doesn't take much to cut up Nate. All that scar, scar tissue on his face, one or two elbow. That's it. Cut up all over, man. And he can stop the fight. <sighs> I'm a oh man. I'm 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 a go with Nate Diaz here. Just from what I see from Ferguson, every single fight just doesn't look good. With Nate, Nate looks the same. You know what I'm saying? He looks at like the same fighter to me when he's in there. Ferguson doesn't look that like the same man. Like, and that's just it. So I'm gonna go with Nate Diaz, and I'm gonna say Nate Diaz by uh, decision, guys. But I'm not confident, man, because like again, if Ferguson hit him with an elbow. One or two elbows, that's it. I mean, they, they could stop the fight. So, that's about it there, guys. Quick odd breakdown here. So, what we're working with. Bam, bam. Um, oh, man. It's crazy, man. Um, Darren Weeks, Johan Lannis. Pretty much even fight here, man. Which I don't disagree. I mean, either one of these guys could could win. Just if Weeks let his hands go, you know, but he doesn't really let his hand go. So I'm liking Yan Yuan, Yuan, <laughs> but uh, it's an even fight. Um, Alex Reed, is underdog. They got Melissa Martinez, which I could see why. You know, Martinez come from combati, combati champion, been boxing from her young. I'm liking Alex Reed though, guys. So. Like I said, this fight here, I'm not confident in it at all. So be very careful. Chad and Heli. Um, they got Heli as favorite here. What's the five? One's on the five. I could, I could see that. I don't really have a problem with the odds on that. Um, Daniel Wolf and Norma Dormant. Damn, Norma, Norma is too high, man. You can't. You see, if you look at Norma, I mean, <laughs> I mean, she has experience to beat one or two women, but. I wouldn't have her so high because Wolf is, a, is not a bad boxer, man. Very technical woman, and she's going to have the hide and reach. Even though MMA may not be as good as Norma, but Norma doesn't really take the fight to the ground. Usually stands up. Norma does have submissions, but if I have an R400, nah. Be careful with this one, guys. I put Norma maybe maybe 180. Be careful with this one, guys. I like Norma, but be careful. Odds is too high now. Chris Barnett. And um, J Color, J Color 460, 450. Uh, really, I don't see nothing wrong with this man. He longer reach, height, veteran. He's just more well-rounded guy. Odds are high, but I think he can beat Chris Barnett. Dennis Tulin and Jimmy Pickett. They got Jimmy Pickett as favorite. Not really a big favorite here. Uh, if Jimmy Pickett comes in there, man, his mental is on. He can win this fight, man. But it's tough. You know what I mean? I'm liking Dennis. So you guys do whatever you want to do. You know, it's up to you. <laughs> Play at your own risk, man. But I'm going with Dennis. You know, pick it. You just usually drop the ball, especially against guys who come forward and throw their hands. Um, Anton and Gelatin. 
Oh, gelatin is 600, 700, man, man. In kind of a way, man, uh, you know, I, I think gelatin, you know, that guy's a good prospect, man. He's, that guy's a beast, man. I mean, like I said, I, I see him as a Jacare Shoja, man, a prime. So, I mean, that says a lot. Um, Anton, not a bad fighter, come off the contender series there, but he more just want to jump on your back and stick to you like glue. I mean, if he, if he can do that against gelatin, then it's possible, but man. I'm liking gelatin. I don't think the odds are off, but be careful though. Um, Hakeem Dadu and Julian Rosa. Damn, they got Dadu at 210, 215. I disagree with that, man. I'm liking a, a Rosa. Um, I could see why the speed and the knockout, but you know, that, that, you know Dadu hasn't really, really been knocking on anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm liking a Rosa, guys. So play at your own risk. Um, Ethan Kutaloba, Johnny Walker, Ethan Kutaloba, 200 and something. Uh, now nah, be careful with this one. This fight to me is an even fight. And the reason why I said that because Johnny Walker has a height and reach. I mean, it doesn't take much. If he can land that knee on elbow, game over. So this fight to me is an even fight, man. Irina Adano, Miss Chasing, Irina, 175, 182. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like an Adano here. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think the odds on her is too high either. Feels she's the better fighter here. Um, Dana Rodriguez, Jingling. Dana Rodriguez is 165, 157. Um, Jingling is a more experienced guy here, guys, so be careful. So, But D Rod is not a bad fighter, though. And he shows it. Um, yeah, I feel D Rod should, can get this fight, but be careful. Holland and Chimazai. <sighs> Chimazai, freaking high as hell. I disagree with that. Yeah, I disagree with that, man. I disagree with that, man. Kevin Holland is a dangerous fighter, man. And if he comes in there, and if he can, if he gets taken down one or two times, there's a five-round fight. And we saw from Kamazan how he looks in his last fight there against Burns. How he gets gases out, and gets tired, and gets hit with shots. Holland's a different kind of striker, man. And Holland has a ground game, too. May not be as good ground game as Burns, but he has a ground game, though. So, like I said, I'm liking Holland here. Kamazan can win if he can keep that pace and get a submission. It's a risky one here, guys. I'm liking Holland, though. Nate Diaz, Ferguson. Nate Diaz, underdog here. Kind of close fights. Kind of almost even. Um, Tony Ferguson, I could see why. You know, elbows, you know. Tony Ferguson may have a little speed advantage on him. Uh, close fight. I'm liking Nate, though. So, like I said, Ferguson could win, man. Just as well as Kamazan could win, but the odds in him is too high. So be careful with that one, man. That could be an upset, in my opinion. I could be wrong, though. So that's my odds break on there, guys. Um, yeah, man, you guys, uh, subscribe to this channel. Um, yeah, if you can, you can donate to my PayPal. I actually want to thank a couple of people that's been donating. I really respect that. Uh, I'm not going to throw no names out there because maybe the people don't want to have the names out there. But I thank you a lot for all the support, guys, for all the donations. And the people that don't donate, you know, is all love. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to donate to get any love from them. And you just, you know, you just help the channel out so I can do this more full-time. But you guys keep on kicking. One love out to everybody. And oh.